how her team made it happen. Stacia. Guys, anyone who has put themselves or their child through college knows there is a very big difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. In this case, we're talking $6,000 per semester. But a paperwork error became the difference between what the Torres family actually paid for their daughter's tuition and what they were supposed to pay as residents of Arizona. And when NAU wouldn't listen, Call 12 did and got them a refund. No matter the cost, the Torres family of Prescott wanted to make sure their daughter, Chelsea, could continue her education. First one in our family to go to college, so we were all really excited. An education major at Northern Arizona University, Chelsea works two jobs on top of a full class load. Tuition was expensive. She kept telling me that she was getting charged more than all of her other friends were. And I'm like, oh, you know, no, you aren't, you're fine. Upon closer inspection of Chelsea's student account, I saw that it was being charged as a non-resident. A total of $12,400 overcharged. Terry began making phone calls, trying to get to the bottom of the mistake. I first started with financial aid, who switched me to um, student accounts, who then switched me to the registrar's office. Around and around she went for five months. At first, the NAU employees confused Chelsea with a student from California. Ugh, frustrated. Then, NAU blamed the error on a paperwork issue. On Chelsea's first application, she did not um, mark where it says, did your parents file Arizona state taxes? She didn't mark anything. So the school marked her as a non-resident, despite transcripts and all other required documents showing Chelsea was indeed an Arizona resident. I was at a standstill with them. Terry decided to make another call. Channel 12 call for action. Richard speaking to help you. Richard, one of our Call 12 volunteer investigators, heard the frustration in Terry's voice from five months of NAU giving her the runaround. To make a mistake and then stonewall the correction of it, which is, I think, what happened here, I don't understand that. It could, the whole thing could have been avoided. He contacted the school to let them know our team was now on the case. It was just such a relief to know somebody was out there, you know, doing something and had the resources to do it. About two weeks later, the family got a call from NAU. Our office doesn't usually do this, um, but we've had many phone calls, so we're going to credit your account, the $12,000. They got their money the next day. We were ecstatic, because that'll pay for her next three semesters at school, so it's just awesome that you know she won't have to get any more loans and yeah we were ecstatic it's a huge load off the shoulders of the torres family arizona proud and still lumberjack proud i'm just really happy so thank you <laughs> now i asked nau why did call 12 have to get involved to get this family a refund they wanted me to scan and send my driver's license to get a statement about this situation I declined because that's ridiculous, but it demonstrates the complications in communicating with NAU as an organization. If we as a TV station have trouble getting answers from them, how is a family supposed to make it happen? Mark? You know, there's a lot of mailing going on right now. Cards to send out, presents to ship. For a car enthusiast from Mesa, he FedExed some special parts for an antique car he was working on. But one of the parts arrived in pretty bad shape, and then FedEx didn't want to pay for the damage, so Call 12 stepped in to help. There's a lot of history in Ken's Mesa garage. You do kind of wonder where these things came from and how they managed to survive. A 1937 Cadillac and a 37 Dodge pickup. I like the style of the 37s. He spent countless hours restoring them. It's nice to make something better. But he ran into a bump in the road when working on the pickup. I had the truck shipped out here and I had the uh, side curtains shipped by FedEx. But when the side curtains arrived. It looked like the one box had been thrown the length of the truck. Ken purchased insurance for his package, but FedEx denied his claim. They were just trying to avoid um, paying for their negligence. Ken thought his only option was small claims court, but right before filing, he decided to call 12 for action. Roy, one of our volunteer investigators, took the call and took over the case. Next thing you know, about two or three weeks uh, later, um, I got a check. Not just for the insured amount, but for the cost of the side curtain. 
In a statement, a FedEx spokesperson had this to say. All of our customer shipments are important to us. While it is company policy not to discuss the details of our customer shipments, rest assured our customer service professionals work directly with our customers to address any issues or concerns. Ken is glad to have the car fixed because now he's ready for the open road. Call 12, you feel like made the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're glad to help. Now, if you have a complaint with a business, you can call 12 for action and file your complaint online. Just go to 12news.com and then click call 12 for action. It's one of the fastest growing retailers in the country, Forever 21. But a former employee from the Valley says while the company continues to expand, she couldn't get paid. It took seven months and a call for action before Forever 21 finally paid up. Painting, drawing, styling. Deandra Deshini loves to be creative. This is like what I draw. It's one of the things that drew her to work at one of her favorite stores, Forever 21. They're very affordable and they're very stylish. She worked at the store in Arrowhead Town Center for eight days, organizing merchandise and helping customers, then decided to find a different job due to scheduling issues. That was last November. It wasn't until last month of June that I finally got my paycheck. Seven months to pay her $73.23, and getting it was a major struggle, with store managers who said they couldn't help and payroll employees who wouldn't call her back. I was pretty upset. I was and disappointed that a store like that, as big as Forever 21, could just do that, because it just ripped me off. So finally, she decided to call 12 for action. Nancy, a volunteer investigator, started looking into the issue and helped Deandra work with the Department of Labor. She actually did call me back and she always came back with like good results. Putting pressure on the company until they paid up. Finally. <laughs> Deandra didn't expect to have to fight so hard for money she earned, but she's glad she did. And she doesn't plan to set foot in Forever 21 ever again. I actually thought Forever 21 would have a lot more like respect towards their employees, but apparently they don't. I reached out to Forever 21 asking why it took so long for DeAndre to get paid. I never heard back. The Department of Labor simply saying the situation is resolved.